Hi, I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge, and welcome to three scaling questions from Solution Focused Therapy How to Use Scaling to Break Down Black and White Thinking. Have you ever noticed that when one of your clients is in pain, they can tend to see their world in all or nothing terms? You know, for instance, you may hear them say something like, um, um, I'm a complete idiot, or I'm in complete agony. If only I was free of this pain. I'm so miserable. Why can I never be happy? Okay. And this feeling that pain, whether physical or emotional, is all encompassing and never ending can lead to hopelessness and helplessness. But as therapists and counselors, we're usually lucky enough not to be in the same state of agony. So we're able to understand that little in life is black and white, all or nothing, absolutist. From outside of our client situations, we can see that no one is completely in pain or completely pain free all the time. And that even the most depressed person we've ever met had days or moments when they felt better than at other times. So sometimes we need to help our clients find the shades of grey so that they can benefit from and build, build as well on the more subtle improvements in their situation, not be so extremist. Fortunately, we have a simple but powerful solution-focused therapy technique at our disposal to do just that, and it's called scaling. So let's look at the power of scaling and see how it really works. Using scaling in therapy or counseling is a way to help your client break down their perception of their situation into grades. Okay, so doing this accomplishes three things. Okay, so firstly, we put a fence around the experience so it no longer feels limitless and uncontrollable. The client can begin to see it as more manageable and therefore more hopeful. We engage the observing self and help the client step outside for a while of their experience. Scaling encourages the thinking brain and loosens the grip of the emotional brain. The thinking brain can then step aside and observe the workings of the emotional brain. We break down expectations and, and therapy strategy into discrete steps, rendering them more realistic and achievable. Scaling, sometimes called grading, is effective in therapy because it switches the conversation from being about emotions to being about numbers. And this is in itself can help people feel calmer. It's a very simple reframe. Here are three solution-focused question ideas which use scaling to help your clients find hope in their situation. So firstly, the most simple scaling question is, so on a scale of one to 10, so when working with a client who's experiencing severe prolonged pain, for example, I might say, okay, so if 10 is the most unbearable agony possible, and one is the most blissful comfort, what number would you put yourself on right now? You might notice how here we've instantly reframed pain as numbers. I've personally found there's usually no need to labor that point. You know, people instinctively understand how to rate their pain and feelings, people get it. Of course, they might straight away say 10, or perhaps they'll think about it for a bit and judge that and well, you know, uh, they've actually felt worse sometimes and better sometimes. And so they might grade their current experience uh, with, with, for example, an eight or something like that. Now they've gone from being in complete agony to being at an eight on the scale of one to 10. So we can, it's a gentle way of challenging absolutist thinking. I might then ask how they're going to know when the discomfort level has decreased to a seven. Okay, what would be the first sign that lets you know it's gone down to a seven? This approach can work equally well with problem states other than physical pain. And you can set your scale up in either direction, depending on where you want to 
lay the uh, emphasis or whether you want to increase or decrease the perceived uh, response that they're having. If one is the most depressed you've ever felt and 10 is the happiest, okay, then where are you today? You might ask someone. If 10 is the most anxious and one is the most relaxed, okay, how do you feel at the moment? The second solution focused approach is to ask questions that precipitate change. Now, it's not enough just to get these numbers. We can use these numbers to really help our clients to start to think more flexibly and feel hope in the immediate future. Once we've started to break down the all or nothing absolutist perception by using numbers, we can ask questions that presuppose and possibly even precipitate positive changes. So I recall asking a man in chronic pain to tell me how he'd know when his pain had gone down from seven to a six, what difference would he notice? So we're not talking about being in pain or not in pain, breaking it down. And he described the exact difference to me in great detail and actually found himself slipping down to a five as he was speaking. And he said, gosh, I've actually gone down to a five even just talking about it. If someone tells me that on Tuesday they felt they were at a four on a depression scale, where 10 is the happiest they could be, I might ask them something like, think really carefully now, what prevented you from being a three? Or if someone tells me their motivation to quit smoking is at an eight, when 10 indicates that they're fully motivated and committed to stop, I might, I might ask something like, um, and what would you need to have different? Or, or in what way would you need to be different so that you're able to get up to that 10? Okay, so careful targeting of such questions helps us find out what they're already doing that helps them cope better or what they need to do differently or more of. Okay, you know, if someone's at a three out of 10 for depression, what stops them being a two? What are they doing to be a three and not a two? We can then encourage those beha <coughs> behaviors. And similarly, we can ask, what will it be like when they're at a five and so forth? And thirdly, when using scaling questions, don't just ask questions about numbers. We can also keep in mind that scaling doesn't have to be limited to numbers. You know, for some people, a more visual approach might work better. So you could write out numbers on a piece of paper to create a um, visual scale, but you can also leave numbers behind uh, altogether. So for instance, I keep a large um, picture of a staircase that I can use at a moment's notice. And I might show my client the picture of the staircase and say something like, you know, if the bottom of the staircase is no motivation whatsoever and the top of the stairs is unstoppable motivation, can you point to the step you're on right now? Okay. Or if I don't have pictures to hand, uh, I might use hypnosis to get the person to um, visualize a path or staircase and simply tell me, where they're on or which part of that staircase or path they're on at the moment. I can then encourage them to hypnotically explore the progressively positive steps forward. Okay, so we're, we're taking the, the concept, the cognitive concept of scaling into the realm of uh, hypnosis. I, I hope this helps you see that scaling can be a simple yet formidable tool in therapy for giving your clients a new perspective on their difficulties. So with this tool in hand, clients often feel a new sense of control and empowered to make changes they may never have believed possible, one step at a time, taking out the all or nothing thinking of over emotional thinking. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. And if you did, please hit like and subscribe. And if you want to hear when my next video is published, hit the notification bell below. I'm Mark Tyrrell of Uncommon Knowledge. And if you'd like to subscribe to my email newsletter, you can find it over at unk.com slash blog, or that's unk.com slash blog. And thanks for watching.